like the countertops, we like the cabinets. The problem really is the backsplash. It's just so dark. It, it feels dated. We're not really happy with it. Okay, so it is a little dark. I mean, obviously from the color, looks like a subway tile shape, and I think that's a terracotta. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in good shape. I mean, the grout's all there. I don't see any broken tiles. You guys, you want to change it? You want to take it out? Well, in our last house, we did a floor-to-ceiling renovation in the kitchen, and I'm just not willing to do that again. It just took way too long, and, you know, we're pretty happy with everything except for the backsplash. So if there's something quick we could do, that would be perfect. Maybe a facelift. That sounds great. All right, let me show you what I have in mind. Okay. So, April, if you don't like the color of your tile, but you don't want to change it out, I'm thinking that we would just paint over it. Tile? Can you paint tile? Well, I wouldn't use a traditional paint on tile. I mean, tile tends to be hard, non-porous. It's got a glazing on it, so it's a very slick surface. Mm -hmm. But if we use a special paint, I think we can actually pull it off. And so this is a kit um, that is actually designed to resurface tubs and a tile in a bathroom. And we can use it in the kitchen. And it's actually an epoxy. It comes in two parts. So there's the epoxy, and then there's the activator. You mix them together, and in this case, uh, it's white, so we can actually turn your red terracotta into a white subway tile. Great, that should really brighten it up. All right, so it's gonna be a lot of prep work okay. before we can do this. So let's clean off the counters and get started on the prep. All right, let's do it. So we've protected your granite countertop with a plastic drop cloth, and now we've gotta clean the tile. And it starts by taking off things like caulk. Now we want to clean the entire surface of the backsplash. And we're going to start with a kitchen and bath cleaner. It's just a bleach and water mix from a spray bottle. And then we're going to scrub everything with a scouring pad. We're going to take a little extra time behind the stove because that's typically a spot that's got more grease on the wall. All right, April, tile looks pretty good. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Probably the cleanest it's ever been, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, even though we're using an epoxy coating specifically designed for tile, we want to make sure that we have good adhesion, and that means we want to etch the tile. Okay. And we're going to do that in two steps, and the first one's using a calcium rust cleaner. Okay. All right, so we'll just put a little bit on our abrasive pads, There's some for you, and then we're just going to start going after it. The second step in etching is to go over the entire surface with sandpaper. We're going to use a 400 grit that's really fine, and we just want to degloss the tile. All right, so after a light sanding, you want to clean it off with a clean rag that is damp. Just wipe it down and then make sure it gets completely dry, probably at least 15 minutes. All right, April, tile and grout are completely dry and we're ready for the paint. Awesome. Now, it's kind of stinky, so we actually put two fans in the windows to make sure we've got great ventilation and we've opened everything up. Right. It's two parts, as I told you, an A and a B, and we made sure that we mix the A and the B independently in their own cans, and now we're going to mix them together. Does this end up being the consistency of paint? Close to it, but a little thinner. That fits perfectly, and now we're going to stir the two of them together for two minutes. Two minutes. All right, it's thickening up, and that's pretty good right there. That's the consistency we're looking for. Now I'm gonna pour it into two trays, one for you, one for me. A little bit in that one, a little bit in that one. Clean up the drip, and then we're gonna cover that can while we're not using it, thank you. All right, April, so these grout lines are a little deep, so we're actually going to paint them first with the brush, and we're also going to cut in. I'll have you start with that, and then I'm going to follow behind with a roller. Just don't get too far ahead of me, because we always want a wet edge. All right. We're going to do two coats, so it doesn't have to be put on that heavy. You want to make sure that it doesn't drip. Looks really good. I like it. like it already, huh? Yeah. Right on the second coat. I can't believe what a difference this makes. Already, right? Okay, April, that's the first coat. We'll let this dry for an hour, and then we'll do the second coat. All right, first coat completely dry. Great. Pretty much the same process with the second coat. You work the brush, I'll work the roller. We'll keep a wet edge, and just try to keep the paint a little bit tighter to the grout line this time. Just like that, you are a pro. 
I'm going to go over one tile at a time in the direction of the tile, just not going over the grout lines with the roller. When you work with the roller, you might see some bubbling. Don't worry about that. It'll go away and the paint will lay down flat. All right, got the stove back in place. The second coat has been drying for about an hour, so that's good to go. I ran a bead of caulk between the wall and the countertop because we dug out the old caulk there. And even though it's dry to the touch, it really should set up overnight. So we're not going to put the uh, cover plates back on yet. Okay. They might stick. So you can do those tomorrow? I can do that. All right, well, other than that, I think you are good to go. What do you think? It looks like an entirely different kitchen. I love it.